I had played basically every single Mario game in existence. So today, I thought it would be fun to share my top 10 favorite Mario games. This list will only include the mainline 2D and 3D games, so no sports games, Mario Maker, Mario Kart games, compilations, Mario parties, or ports. Remakes such as Bowser's Fury and Super Mario Bros. Deluxe also do not count. Also no Yoshi, Luigi, Wario, or Peach games, since they aren't solely Mario. There are obviously going to be spoilers, so you've been warned. And with all that covered, let's go! Believe it or not, I actually like New Super Mario Bros. 2. Sure, it may be stale, but it's my favorite New Super Mario Bros. game. First off, the game looks amazing for a 3DS game. It looks very clean. And the game is really colorful. Like, really colorful. And the music is admittedly okay. It's the same as the other games, but it adds a lot more boz. Take a listen. Also, this game brings back the raccoon leaf from Mario Bros. 3. The 3DS sure is obsessed with the Tanuki Tail, but we also have the classics such as the Mushroom, Fire Flower, Star, and the Mega Mushroom, which only appears in a whopping two stages. We also have a brand new power-up, the Gold Flower. This will turn you into King Midas. Every brick that you hit with a gold ball will turn into coins. You also get a lot more coins from enemies. The downside is that it's only used in a few levels, aside from the Toad Houses. This game also has pretty meh level design, but it's still fun to play, just rather forgettable. Also, even if you haven't played it, you know the entire gimmick of this game is to collect 1 million coins. Hell, it's even on the back of the box. There are also only 6 main worlds in the game, 3 of them are bonus worlds. World Mushroom, World Flower, and World Star. It's nice to see some worlds that aren't just lava, mountain, forest, etc. There's also a coin rush mode where you have to collect as many coins as possible in a short amount of time. You can also purchase stages, making it the first Mario game with DLC. And the main reason why I dislike this game is that the coin gimmick gets a little old after a while, and it doesn't really unlock anything. And it is way too easy to get lives. I maxed out my live count without even trying. It's that easy. So yeah, it's a pretty good Mario game, just not one that I go back to too often. And it's a little forgettable. Super Mario 64 is a very iconic game. It basically introduced the idea of 3D video games. So why is it so low? Well, I think it's aged kinda poorly. Don't get me wrong, I still go back to this game a lot, but I just think some things haven't really aged the best. For example, the controls just don't work sometimes. Sometimes my jump feels off and unnatural, and bumping into walls just feels awkward. And the camera is pretty bad, but this game is still really fun. There are 15 stages in the game, each with 6 stars and a 100 coin star to collect. Some stars are tied to others, such as the snowman's head star not spawning until you collect the earlier stars, but most of the time you can go for stars out of order. Another thing about the game that I don't really like is the hints for the stars. Like some of them make absolutely zero sense, like blast away the wall, where you have to shoot at some random corner of the wall to get the star. Also did I mention that this game is pretty broken? Like you could beat the entire game with zero stars, which is just hilarious. And we all know about the backwards long jumps. Listen, I know I crapped a lot on this game, but I still enjoy it. I think that Mario 64 has very high highs, but it also has some pretty low lows. But I still go back to play this game often. I know some of you might get mad at this, but I never really got into Mario 3. However, when I did, I realized I was missing out. Let me get the obvious out of the way, it's the best NES game. Look at how much better it looks compared to the original Mario Bros. It's a huge step up in quality, and the controls are also really good. They aren't slippery like the original game, and I actually feel like I'm in control. And the levels are absolutely amazing. It's cool how they take place on a stage. And there's also a huge amount of brand new power-ups, such as the raccoon suit, which lets you fly, the Chinooki suit, which lets you turn into a statue, the hammer suit, which lets you throw hammers, a frog suit, which lets you swim better underwater and you always jump, and I guess the Karibo shoe is also a power-up. We also have a proper world map, item reserve, toad houses, and minigames. I absolutely love a lot of levels in this game, such as 1-3, the final castle, and also the entirety of the giant land. We also get introduced to the Koopalings. They might feel stale now, but this is the first game that they appeared in. 
One of the downsides to this game is that there's no way to save your progress. I understand this with the NES error, but this is a really long game and most people won't beat it in one sitting. But even still, this game has so many fun and unique ideas and it really set a proper expectation for the Mario series. For me, this is the Mario game that really kicked off the series. I just wish I got into it more. But all in all, it's still a really fun game. And the TV show kind of slaps. A lot of people are going to be baffled that I put this game so high, but I actually really like 3D World. It's the first Mario game that I ever owned. It isn't the first that I played, but the first one that I actually got to own. I mostly played Kirby back in the day. When nostalgia aside, I really love this game. First of all, the controls are great. All of the movement feels so fluid, especially the Switch version. The addition of dives in the Switch version is also great. I love the levels in this game. Even though I love open world games more, I actually don't mind the levels being more linear. Every level feels different from one another, especially the green stars you collect and the stamps. Not to mention this game has an amazing soundtrack. I mean, there's no need for some of these songs to go so hard. The game also introduced a brand new power up, the Cat Bell. We also have the Lucky Bell, which ground pounding from high distances you turn into a statue and basically puke out coins. The Switch version of the game added the Invincibility Bell, which is a cat version of the Invincibility Tanuki, although it's locked behind a paywall, but whatever. The final battle in this game is really awesome, despite being an auto-scroller. And the bosses are actually really creative in this game. We have a huge rock, Bowser in a car, a huge bully, a square spike bar, and a huge circus guy. Very demonic. It's also home to one of the hardest stages in Mario history, Champions Road. I really don't understand why 3D World gets a lot of hate. It's not the best game of all time, sure, but it's still a very great Mario game. Also, this is unrelated to the ranking, but Bowser's Fury is really good. Enough said. This game might surprise you, but I absolutely love Mario Land 2. This game looks amazing for the Game Boy. While the original Mario Land has not aged the best, its sequel looks amazing. This even gives Mario 3 a run for its money, despite being black and white. There are even brand new power-ups. While the original Mario Land had only the Super Ball Flower, Mario Land 2 has the Carrot, which turns Mario into a bunny. And it also brings back the Fire Flower, Mushroom, and the Star. The game also controls a lot better. It's so fluid and everything just works. You also don't fall to the ground like a bag of rocks like the original. There's even spin jumps in this game, which is pretty cool. Not to mention that every single location in this game is very unique. You go into space, into a yard, a cave of slime, and even go inside Mario. Ugh. This game also has really cool bosses. It's cool how Wario uses their power-ups for his advantage in the final boss. This game is longer than Mario Land 1, but you can still probably beat it in under an hour. Coins also have a use in this game. By going to this cave, you can get coins to get lives or items. Strange how games like New Super Mario Bros. 2 don't have a shop like this when it really needs it. I like how the game keeps track of the coins and enemies you killed. I know a lot of people will disagree with me here, but I think Mario Land 2 is a charming game that deserves more recognition. At the time of filming, this game came out a few months ago, but this game is really good. Super Mario Bros. Wonder is basically the first original 2D Mario game we've gotten since the new Super Mario Bros. series. The jump from the trash that was new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe to Super Mario Bros. Wonder was absolutely astonishing. Let's get the obvious out of the way. The game looks amazing. I love how expressive the characters are. It seems like a cartoon. The story also is that Bowser kidnapping Peach, which I know is astonishing it's not the plot. We get introduced to brand new characters such as King Florian and the Poplins. We also get a whole lot of playable characters to choose from. Of course, we got Mario, Luigi, and the Toads, but we also have Peach, Daisy, and the Yoshis. There are brand new power-ups such as the Elephant Mushroom, which turns Mario into a big elephant. We have the Bubble Flower, which turns Mario into a parkour master, and the Drill Mushroom, which is pretty good. And of course, the Fire Flower, Star, and Mushroom Returns. I just think that we could get some more items. Where's the Ice Flower? Penguin Suit. Prope oh wait, we really don't need that one. 
I just think that we can use a few more items, but it's still an acceptable amount, especially since most are new. Moving on to the level design, this is some of the best level design that 2D Mario has to offer. I mean, the Wonder Flowers are amazing, Mario rides on top of bulls, and even Metal Mario returns. This makes the level so much more fun to play. This game also brings back the hard levels from the previous Mario games, like the Final Badge Challenge, Jump Jump Jump, and the Final Challenge. However, the only thing I hate about this game are the bosses. The bosses are garbage. There's two bosses in the game, Bowser Jr. and Castle Bowser. This is worse than New Soup U, which is saying something. The final boss is pretty cool though, so if you want a solid 2D Mario experience or just want a chill platformer to play, this is the game for you. I'm sure you were expecting this one. Super Mario Galaxy is a magical experience. This game looks pretty good for the Wii. Not perfect, but for 2007 standards, it holds up really well. We also get introduced to a new character, who is Rosalina, the mother of the Lumas and watcher of the Cosmos. We also see Lumas, which help Mario by transforming the launch stars or just supporting him. And how could I not mention the white Luma, which gives Mario the ability to spin? Being able to spin makes the controls near perfection. It feels so good to save a jump or blast through an enemy with a spin attack. Taking place in space adds a lot to the game. The locations are awesome. Since we are in space, gravity changes constantly depending on the planet you're on. My favorite stage is being Beach Bowl Galaxy and Melty Bolton Galaxy. And oh my god, why did the devs go so hard on the soundtrack? I mean, just listen to Gusty Garden Galaxy. There is a lot of content in this game. Over 120 stars to collect, and after 100%ing, you can play as Luigi. And this game gets pretty difficult too, especially in the later stages. You can even unlock stages using star bits, something else that's new to the game. You can even shoot them back to kill enemies, which is pretty cool. We also get to see power-ups from 2D Mario games in the first time in 3D. We get the Fire Flowers, a returning power-up, and a massive amount of new ones too, like the Bee Mushroom, Red Star, Spring Mushroom, and Boo Mushroom. It was also the first time the Ice Flower appeared in a mainland Mario game. Not to mention the final boss is one of the best final bosses in all of 3D Mario history. This game is such an amazing experience, which is why it's still loved by almost all gamers to this day. Super Mario Odyssey was the game that I was most hyped for. I remember waiting for this game to come out, such good times. But did it live up to the hype? Yes, it really, really did. This game is amazing. First off, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Mario's clothes look so much better than the previous 3D Mario game 3D world. And of course, Cappy is such an awesome character. Being able to throw your cap makes the controls so much better than they already are. The controls in this game are perfected. Everything flows so much and just feels good. The locations are also brilliant. Look at the Sand Kingdom, Bowser's Kingdom, Luncheon Kingdom, and my favorite, the Metro Kingdom. Every single one of these kingdoms are full of personality and life. Some kingdoms such as the Dark and Darker Side are insanely difficult and have some of the hardest moves in the game. Most kingdoms also have 2D sections. By going into this 8-bit pipe, you can turn it to 2D, which is a great callback to the original Mario Bros in the NES era. And I haven't even mentioned the amount of content in this game. There's over 800 unique moves to collect in this game. This game will definitely keep you busy. You can also get costumes and some are throwbacks to older games like Chef Mario being from Yoshi's Cookie, 8-Bit Mario being from the original Mario Bros, and Builder Mario being from Mario Maker. There's so much to collect in this game. There's the costumes I was talking about, souvenirs for the Odyssey, stickers, and even music. Yes, there's a music selection menu which is new to 3D Mario. We even see Pauline for the first time in 3D. We also have original bosses, the Brutals. They aren't that difficult, but they're very fun to fight. I haven't even mentioned the captures yet. By throwing your cap at certain enemies and objects, Mario can basically possess them. Each capture has a unique moveset that can be used to solve puzzles or find power moons. Sure, some captures such as the cactus and tree aren't that good, but you can capture a goddamn T-Rex which is awesome. There's also another game mode called Balloon World where you can hide and find different balloons from users around the world. This game is such a masterpiece, I can't believe it's turning 7 years old this year. Super Mario World is my favorite 2D Mario game, and I can say that without hesitation. 
this was the first 2D Mario game I've ever played. But nostalgia aside, this game holds up really well. For starters, the jump from Mario 3 to Mario World is amazing, and this game looks great. I absolutely adore the 16-bit graphics, hence my love for the style of this game. I do hear a lot of people complaining about the controls being slippery, and I honestly understand that. It doesn't really affect the game for me, but I still think that the controls are really good. I just wish that we could spin jump with the shoulder button instead of the A button, but it isn't game breaking. This is the first game to introduce a lot of staples to the Mario series, such as Yoshi, Mario's green dinosaur buddy. We also get the Cape Feather, which lets Mario fly, and a huge amount of new enemies, such as the Banzai Bill, Rex, Charging Chuck, and countless others. This game is filled to the brim of content. There are 96 levels in this game, and 24 secret exits. We also get to save our progress, which is absent in Mario 3. The level design in this game is great. There are a few stinkers, but almost all the levels are so enjoyable to play, especially the special world levels in Chocolate Mountain. The levels are also challenging, but not unfairly. If you die, it feels like an issue on your end, not the game's end like the lost levels. There's also a TV show for this game, but it's admittedly not as good as Mario 3. Also, while recording, I got this really weird glitch, which is kinda cool. So yeah, this game is full to the brim of content, and all this stuff to do makes it one of the best Mario games. I think you know what number one is, so let's get right into it. Was it really a surprise? Super Mario Sunshine is my favorite video game of all time. Starting off, the controls are janky, I will admit, but Flood basically perfects them. It is so awesome using him. He controls well, and he gives a lot more movement options, and it makes movement more precise. And how can I not mention the locations? All the beach themes look amazing. The Alfino Plaza is bustling with life. The Piantas are amazing characters too, better than just seeing toads all the time. In places like Gelato Beach, Pinna Park, Rico Harbor, these locations are so fun to play through. Each shine feels different from one another too. The bosses in this game are also really fun. Petey Piranha wreaking havoc on Bianco Hills, a huge wiggler running through Gelato Beach, and even Big Man from Splatoon. Not to mention that this is the first time Yoshis were rideable in 3D Mario. They can even puke out fruit juice. And the music? Oh, the music is absolutely slapping. I will admit that some shines are tedious, such as the Pinko Machine and Durian Mission, but even still, Sunshine is such an amazing game that everyone seems to hate on for no reason. My favorite video game of all time. So, thanks for watching the video. If you watched till the end, like and subscribe and comment your favorite Mario game. If you want to see videos like this early, you can become a channel member for as low as 99 cents a month. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.